Hello again, this uh, lesson is intended for one week, it's chapter, tw chapter 15. Um, we're looking at piecewise functions, step functions, and absolute value. Again, it's intended for one week, students are to watch the video, and then complete the assignments in class kick. Um, you do not need to show work on the screen as it's easier to do work on paper. However, um, you will have to do graphs in this section. Please try the best that you can. I know it's difficult, especially if you're using a mouse and not a touch screen to do a graph accurately. Just try the best that you can. There will also be other places to type in answers, so please make sure that you do that or use a text box. Um, again, it's probably easier to just do on the calculator, so make sure you have your calculator out. If you don't have a calculator, you'll definitely need one for these. There's links in Schoology, how you can get a graphing calculator if you don't have one. Um, so anyway, taking a look at piecewise functions, remember that a piecewise function is parts and pieces. That's why it's called piecewise function. Um, these are what the equations, if you want to call them, look like. All right, there's parts and pieces. So this is saying do the function of 2x plus 1 for all the values of x that are less than 2, but then you're going to do x squared plus 1 for all the values that are x is greater than 2 or equal to 2. So you're going to have parts and pieces. It's sort of going to look like a mismatch type thing. Sometimes the graphs will connect. Other times there will be spaces in between. We'll see some examples of each. You might have a line and then a curve for a parabola or different parts and pieces of line. So it forms like a V or a weird shape. Right? It's going to be all over the place. Anytime that you have less than or greater than, that means that you're going to use an open dot at the end when you're graphing. If you have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you're going to use a closed dot when you're graphing. The way that I like to remember this is you do less work by doing the, not drawing the line underneath. So you do less work by not shading it, the dot in. You do more work by putting the line underneath. So you do more work by filling in your circle. Um, so you're going to type these into the calculator, into your graphing calculator, into the y equals, and then use your table. All right, use second and table because you only want the values for where x is less than 2 here and where x is greater than or equal to 2 there. So by looking at your table, you'll be able to graph it more accurately. So first of all, you have to decide whether things are a function or are not a function. It is a function if it passes the vertical line test. Um, if you can, what the vertical line test says, it fails the vertical line test if you can draw a straight up and down line, that's a vertical line, that passes through two points. So these are all sort of examples of like piecewise functions. Well, these are functions, those are not functions. Um, these are examples of what your piecewise functions might look like. We have a line coming up like this. These two points are overlapping right here. All right, these two points are overlapping. There's only one point really there. It's the same for both. And then you have a parabola. Nowhere on there does it cover up two points at the same time with a vertical line. So this passes the vertical line test. Yes, that is a function. Same thing here. They're not connected, but that's okay. Here you have an open dot. Here you have a closed dot. So there's only one x value there. There's not two x values. So, um, or two y values, rather. Um, so it does not pass, it passes the vertical line test. You can only draw a straight line. When you draw a straight line up, it only goes through one point. If it goes through two points, if you have two points directly right above each other, it is not a function. So here's my vertical line. Here's my vertical line. It passes through two points right here. Therefore, it fails the vertical line test. So it is not a function. Same thing here. There's not a dot there, but it goes right through this part of a parabola. And then it, um, it goes right through there. Uh, so that is not a function because there's two points right there. Um, it's not exactly right there, but it's right right here. All right, there's two points right above each other, so that is a no. So it's no if there's two points right above each other. So these are what your uh, piecewise functions will look like. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to type in to your y equals 2x plus 1. Go to second and table. You want all the values that are less than 2. Since you want all the values that are less than 2, you're not looking at 3, 4, 5. You're not even looking at 2. You're not looking at 2, 3, 4, 5. You've got to you gotta scroll down in your table so that you can see all the negatives. So when I go to graph this one, and I'm going to do this one in 
I'm going to do this one in red. All right. So when you go to do that, um, you're going to see that you're going to have values. If you start at 2, all right, 2 is really 5 on your table. All right, 2 is really 5 on your table. So you're going to put a dot right there. Um, now, it's not, it's not actually going to be a closed dot there, though. It's actually going to be an open dot right there at 5 because it's less than. If it was or equal to, that would include the 2. But if you figure like 1.9 repeating, that's why we're doing the open dot right there. It's really close to 2, but doesn't include it. And then the next ones are here. 1 is really 3 on your table. 0 is really 1 on your table. A negative 1 is really negative 1 on your table. Negative 2 is really negative 3 on your table. Negative 3 is really negative 5, and so on and so forth. Um, and we have a line coming like this. And make sure you remember your arrow. Um, always label the parts and pieces of your thing. This is the 2x plus 1 part. Then we have the second part. Our second part is x squared plus 1. I'm going to do that in blue. So we have x squared plus 1. So again, go to your y equals, hit second and table. This time we want all the numbers that start at 2 and are bigger than 2 from looking at your table. So 2 is actually 5. So this one is actually connected because there is a dot there now. So you can fill in that open circle that we didn't before. Um, I'm going to just do the integers to make, it, make, make life easy for myself. 4 is really 10. So I'm going to put a dot at 10. And then um, 5 is really approximately 17. So here's my parabola. So it fits on my graph. All right. um, make sure that you put your label. So here's my piecewise graph. I have a straight line that moves up to a parabola. Less than 2, it's a straight line. Greater than or equal to 2, we have our parabola. Find the f of negative 6. Well, negative 6 fits into this equation. So you've got to pick out which equation you're going to use. Negative 6 is less than 2, so we're not going to use it for the greater than or equal to 2 part. We want the less than 2. So you're going to put your negative 6 and sub it in, or you could just look at your table for that specific one. 2 times negative 6 plus 1 gives you negative 11. For the f of 10, we would use the second one, because 10 is bigger than 2. So we would have 10 squared instead of x squared plus 1. So that's going to give you 101. Is it a function, yes or no? Yes, this one is. Remember, it's only no if there's two dots right above each other. The only place that you might think is here, but remember it didn't include the point on the line, but it did include the point for the parabola. So there's not really two dots there. That's your piecewise function. So if we take a look at another one, all right, for all values less than 0, we're going to use 2x plus 3. For all values greater than or equal to 0, you're going to use 3 minus x. So you type that into your y equals. We only want to look at the values for less than 0. I'm going to do this one in red. So 2x plus 3, all the values that are less than, less than um, 0. So at 0, it's really at 3, but that's going to be an open circle. At negative 1, it's going to be 1. At negative 2, it's going to be negative 1, and so on and so forth. We'll just continue this pattern and put our line and label it. For the second one, I'm going to do this one in blue. We want all the values that are equal to 0 or bigger than 0. It's going to be another line. Um, but this time, zero is, 0 is equal to 3, so I'm going to have a dot at 3 because it includes it, so I'm going to fill in that dot. And then we are 1 is 2, 2 is 1, 3 is 0, 4 is negative 1, and it keeps on going down like that. So we have 3 minus x. So there's our piecewise function. Sort of almost looks like an absolute value, almost. Um, so evaluate these, plug them in. We want 0, so we're going to use the second equation. So the f of 0 is going to be 3, because 3 minus 3 is 0. Or sorry, 3 minus, yeah, 3 minus 0 is 3, rather. Um, the f of negative 3, we want to plug it into this first one. 
So we're going to end up with an answer of negative 3. And f of 2, we want to put it into the second one. 3 minus 2 is 1. Is it a function? Yes, this one is. There are not two dots directly above each other. It's only not a function when there's two dots directly above each other. For the third one, this one has three parts. So for the numbers that are equal to 0 or less than, we're going to use this one. In between 0 and 2, including 2, we're going to use f equals 3. And then, and then 2x minus 1 for x is greater than 2. So when we go to graph this one, for this first section, I'm going to do this one in blue. We're going to have 0 is equal to 3. So that includes the dot. It's a solid dot because it's or equal to. If you type in your table, you'll notice that you have values that go down like this in your table. I'm going to label it. For the middle part, I'm going to do this part in red, f equals 3. All right, f equals 3, this is, good. This is your hazy vixen. This is going to be a horizontal line. All right, so it's going to be 3 here, it's going to be 3 here, it's going to be 3 here. Um, this would be an open dot right there. These would be connected just like that. So this is the f of x equals 3. That's between 0 and 2, not including 0, but including 2. So that's a solid dot and a closed dot at 2. For the third part, I'm going to do this part in the pink. For x is greater than 2, so not including it, but greater than it, we're going to use 2x minus 1. So 2x minus 1, type that into your y equals, hit your second in table. You'll see that 2 is really 3, so it's this point right here, and then this point, and this point. So we end up with, ah, it's hard to write over here. So that f of x equals 2x minus 1 is that section. So it sort of looks like we're going up, across, and back up again. Evaluate negative 1. For negative 1, negative 1 is less than 0, so we're going to put negative 1 into here. Negative 1 plus 3 is positive 2. f of 1, 1 would be in here, so that is 3. Is it a function? Yes, this one is a function. There are not two dots directly above each other. Because 1 included, 1 didn't. 1 included, 1 didn't. There's, they're not two dots right anymore. For this one, this one is a little bit weird. For less than negative 2, we're using this. For greater than 2, we're using this. That create, This is going to create a gap right in the middle. Well, that gap right in the middle, when you go to type this into your calculator, less than negative 2. So at negative 2, when you do your second in table for 3x plus 5, it's going to be over to 2 and negative 2 and down here. So this includes the negative 2, so it's going to be a closed dot at negative 1. For negative 3, it's really down to uh, negative 4, which is this dot, and then down here. So it looks like this. This is for 3x plus 5. And then for the other part, right, I did this in red, this is going to be in blue. For x is greater than 2, we're going to use x minus 4. Well, when we do that, 2 is really at negative 2. It's an open dot. It's an open dot because it's not or equal to. And then if we do the second in table, you're going to notice that it, all these numbers, 2 and negative 1, 4 and 0, 5 and 1, 6 and 2. So it's going to look like this. f of x equals x minus 4. Notice I created this gap in between. Is it a function? Yes, it is. All right. Even though it's missing that part in the middle, it's only a no if there's two dots directly above each other. For the f of 2, do we know what 2 actually is? Well, when we plug in a 2, this does not include it. We don't know what it is. So it is no solution. It has that gap in the middle. We don't know anything about 2. For negative 3, over to negative 3, down to here, or plug in a negative 3 into here, all right, um, we end up with negative 4. And for f of 0, we don't know anything about 0, because that's in that no man's land. So again, this is no solution. Moving on. Moving on to step functions. 
Step functions look like steps, all right? They are a type of piecewise function, but they're disjointed and flat lines. They call it steps because it sort of looks like steps going up. They can either go up or you're going to see ones that go down as well. Now, how the heck did these happen? Well, these happen from word problems. It says in 2006, the rate for a taxi ride in Macon, Georgia was $1.20 for the first mile or part of a mile. And $1.20 for each additional mile or part of a mile. So what the function would look like, you're going to get something like this. This is actually the function for this word problem. What this is saying is that this is the answer. It's in front of this line. This is the answer. So it's going to cost you $1.20. Anywhere in between if you go zero up to and including one mile. Why I said including is because it has the or equal. Now, just after one mile, not including the one mile, because one mile is the dollar twenty, but just slightly after, if you go one inch farther, all the way up to and including two miles is two dollars and forty cents. Two miles, just after two miles, so an inch after two miles all the way up to three miles and including three miles is 360, three to four is 480, and four to five is six dollars. So, so when you go to graph it, it's going to look like this. In between zero and one. So zero is an open dot. All these are open dots here. All these are closed dots for the second part because they all have the or equal to. So from zero to one mile, and including one mile, no matter whether you go half of a mile, three quarters of a mile, anywhere in between there, up to and including one mile, it's going to be a dollar twenty. That is slightly higher than the dollar there. So then for in between mile one and two, you're going to get charged two forty. So if you go one mile and one inch, it's going to be two forty. You go a mile and a half, it's going to be 240. You go a mile and a mile, 1.75 miles, it's going to be 240. So in between here and here, it's going to be an open dot, a closed dot, 240 in between mile one and two. In between mile two and three, it's 360. So 360, that's going to be like that. For 480, in between mile three and four, any, again, anywhere in between there, it's that same price. And then $6 exactly in between there and there. So there's our step function for this. Um, if we take a look at this word problem, to encourage quality and minimize defects, a manufacturer pays the employees a bonus based on the value of defective merchandise produced. The fewer defective merchandise produced, the greater the employee's bonus. The bonuses are calculated as follows. $50 for more than zero and up to including 100 for mer defective merchandise. 30 for more than 100 and up and including $200. $10 for $200 and up including $300 and zero for $300 of defective merchandise. So this is what our function ends up looking like. You get $50 if, it's, if your defective merchandise is in between 0 and 100. A little bit over 100, that penny over 100 to 200, you're going to get a $30 bonus, $10 bonus in between 200 and 300, and then anything that's over 300 is 0. Notice that they sort of write this one backwards. Remember the mouth opens towards a bigger number, so any value that's bigger than 300 is sort of written a little bit weird there. Uh, so anyway... $50 you're going to get if it's between 0 and 100. Here's my 0, here's my 100. So this is going to be an open dot here and a closed dot here. It's closed because of the or equal to. So all of these are open, all of these are closed because they all have the or equal to, except for this last one. Um, then $30 bonus for 100 to 200. $30 bonus for 100 to 200, so open dot to a closed dot at 30. 200 to 300, it's gonna be a $10 bonus. 200 to 300, and that is a closed dot there. And then anything over 300 is going to be zero. 
So they don't tell you what it's going to be, so we're just going to draw an arrow like that going over to the right because it's everything more than 300. Let's do one more of these. A kid's bounce house charges $8 for the first hour and $2 for each additional hour. So that first hour, that first hour, so from minute zero to one hour is going to be $8. $2 for each additional hour. So from the minute over hour one, all the way up to and including that full two hours, you're going to get charged an extra $2. So eight plus two, you're going to get charged $10. From hour two to hour three, you're going to get charged $12 because it's that additional $2. From hour three up to and including hour four, it's going to be $14. From hour four up to and including hour five, that's going to be $16. They want to know for up to five hours. So zero to one is eight. Zero to one is eight. So here's eight. We're going to go like that over to one. It includes the one, so that is a closed dot there. One to two is 10. Two to three is 12. Uh, three to four is 14. And four to five is 16. So that's what it would look like for this one. Sometimes they're going to give you this part. Other times you have to figure it out. On your own. Looking at the last part, which is absolute value, um, what we're doing here are looking at the looking at how things change. All right, I can graph the absolute value function to describe transformations. So we already talked a little bit about transformations. We're going to talk even more about it now. Again, um, so looking at this graph, looking at this graph, um, remember absolute value can be found in your catalog. All right, so to do the absolute value, you need to type it into your catalog to graph it. Um, so this first one, uh, this first one, does it have a min or a max? There's the graph of, this is our equation, by the way, y equals the absolute value of x, or abx, abs, parentheses, x, close your parentheses. Um, so the absolute value, there's the graph of it, it has a min, it does not have a max because it has this bottom part here that's the lowest it can go. Does it have a y-intercept? Where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses it right here at 0, 0. Does it have an x-intercept? Where does it cross the x-axis? It touches it right there at 0, 0. The domain, remember domain are your x, range are your y. Remember they go in alphabetical order. The domain, your x values, it includes all the real x because it goes all the way, all the negative numbers. If we pull back or zoom out, it would keep on going to the left, keep on going to the right. So the domain is 